Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today with my August check-in for my project Apocalypse. Um, this is a series where essentially I'm categorizing my lipstick collection, which is a large lipstick collection. It's about, it's at least 500 lipsticks at this point. And uh, what I want to do this year is break them down into categories, try to systematically go through and test my whole collection this year and also declutter it. So the main thing is not so much getting use of my collection, um, it is decluttering. And I, these are products that I have held on to through past lip declutters because there's something about them that I've liked and I've always thought I wanna give it another try before I get rid of it and that's what I'm doing this year. So I will have my past videos uh, all linked in the description box along with all the products I talk about today. So if I've talked too fast or forgot to say the name or whatever it happens to be, um, I'll have everything listed in order of mention. Now I've chosen indie brands for this month. Now, and I started out being very, very optimistic that I can get through my whole indie lip collection in one month. I can't, I can't. Um, I've got 49 products here and this is gonna be part one. So what I found, because we're currently in lockdown in Melbourne and um, pretty much, yeah, pretty much all month we've been in lockdown, uh, we've been having to wear masks whenever we leave the house uh, for the past couple of months. So um, the products that I've been reaching for on a daily basis have been either lip balms, lip glosses, or liquid lipsticks that set down so they don't transfer in masks. So that's what I was reaching for a lot this month. And I realized I was just picking out all the tube products, the products that are in tube form. So whether it's a lip gloss or whether it's a liquid lipstick, I was reaching for tube products. So when I realized how big my indie collection was, uh, I decided to make this month about tube products. So liquid lipsticks, lip glosses in tubes, and then part two, which might be next month, might be the month after, depends if I want to break, um, will be bullet lip products from indie brands. So the brands that I'm covering in this month, there's Black Moon Cosmetics, there's Coloured Rain, there's Suva Beauty, there's Kaleidos, um, Sugar Pill. I'm also including Lime Crime. I know that they're currently no longer indie. I think they were bought out by a bigger company, but when I got these, they were indie and in my head, that's how I categorize them. So technically they're not at the moment, but they were. And the last brand I'm gonna talk about is Kester Black, which is an Australian one. So I'm gonna start with uh, a brand that this was super easy uh, and I'm getting rid of all of these. And this is from Sugar Pill. I don't, I don't know, I can't, I hate these so much. Like every fiber in, of my being hates these. Um, and the only reason I kept them, I know why I kept them, is the shades are good as mixing shades. I think a couple of years ago, uh, my partner was going to a sort of a work thing and he was dressing up and he wanted to go as like a black and white person, like all grayscale. And I actually mixed this color in with grayy purple lip product and it created a really good gray lip. So. I thought I'd keep these mainly for mixing, but I hate these. These are so gross. So these are just the Sugar Peel liquid lip colors. Um, I've got the shade in Kim Chi. This was a limited edition shade from ages ago, and it is it is just not flattering. It's very, very dry. The wand looks like it's all like feathered and like clumpy because it has it is so dry, but this is like a corpse gray. Um, it is so jarring on my skin tone. I think I like the concept of this, but I just need it to be a lot more wearable. Um, so I never actually did a wear test on this. I just swatched it and I was like, nah, I don't want it, it can go. Then when it came to this collaboration, this was with Little Twin Stars. Um, there's this beautiful teal, which is actually a gorgeous color. I love this color. I would keep this if the formula was all right. It's not one that I'd wear on a daily basis. It's probably one that I'd may maybe try to wear as a liquid liner, um, but I find that this color is very, very striking and it's very bold, but this formula is horrible. Again, I only swatched this on my lips. I sh should have a video playing um, where I was trying to demonstrate that when you press your lips together, this looks like a matte liquid lipstick, but then it releases the glitter. Um, and it has like this almost um, yellowy iridescent shift to it when you sort of release the shimmer. Um, but this sort of chunks up. And I do remember I wore this once on a Beauty News episode. This was years ago. And 
as I was like, as we were filming, I turned to Haley and she looked at me and she goes, oh, you've got flaky, dry liquid lipstick that has fallen from your lips onto your chin. So this actually was flaking off as I was talking. That's, and I think I'd only been wearing it for like an hour. This is horrible. These are so dry. They're so thick. They're so gluggy and so unflattering. Uh, when it comes, so that was a shade Kiki and that was Kimchi. When it comes to the shade La La, um, this is just not a very good pink. Like I thought this was gonna be an epic pastel bright pink because Sugar Pill are well known for their colors, but this was really dull. It was a little bit translucent and because it was sort of like a milky pink, it just looked dull on the lips. It wasn't vibrant, it wasn't fun. Pretty much with these, I'm so happy to just see the space in my drawer because these are not worth the space. They're horrible, they're going. All right, the next brand that I have some pretty strong opinions on, they're not as negative, thank God, um, are Black Moon Cosmetics. So I've got two formulas here. I've got the metallic finish ones, which are called the black metal liquid lipsticks and I've got the standard matte liquid lipsticks that don't have shimmer in them. So I've got two different formulas. I'll start with the traditional liquid lipsticks because I think these are the things that, you know, people can sort of understand a little bit more. Um, I do have some minis here and they're all nude shades. Now, I actually really like the tones of these and I'm really bummed that two of them are dried out. Um, probably the two shades that are most wearable for me. Um, one I lost the sticker to. So I think it's the shade Morning, but I'm not 100% sure. So this shade, okay, despite it being dried out, it's actually a really beautiful shade. It's almost like a peachy light nude. And I'll have a photo of this on the screen of me wearing it. So even though, look, it's still usable, it's just sort of seizing up a little bit. You can feel that it's starting to get a bit dry. It's a little bit tuggy on the lips. Um, it's not as like smooth and thin to apply. And I really don't like thick feeling liquid lipsticks. I just feel like they end up being sort of chunky and uncomfortable. So the fact that these are usable, I'm gonna give them that. But by the time I get around to using them, after I do this whole series, uh, these are probably almost on their last legs. So I'm gonna get rid of them, but I love the shades. So Morning, it's this beautiful peachy shade. Um, on the lips, it almost looks like it matches my skin tone, but it's just a little bit darker. I really love it. So I would totally keep this if it wasn't drying out. Then the shade Gloom, I also love this. Holy crap, this is one of the, one of the nicest cool toned um, brown nudes. Uh, it's more of a medium nude, but it's gorgeous. On the lips, I love this. This is drier than the last one. So this one is is virtually unusable. It is, it is starting to get tuggy and really dry, but God, the colors are gorgeous. I love them. I'm really bummed that they are drying out because I love the shades. They're so up my alley. I do have another mini. This is the shade Dusk. And you can tell by the swatch photo that this one hasn't started drying out because you can see a shine to it. Now, when I was doing a lot of these swatches, um, I wasn't letting them fully dry down because they were really hard to remove. Um, I did do a wear test on this because I found out that it was usable and good. So I've got a photo on the screen of it freshly applied. It's a nice, I'd call this like a, almost like a burnt caramel shade. So it's almost like a walnut shade or a chestnut shade. What's the difference? I don't know. It's quite a warm brownie tone, but it's not like a burnt orange. And you can see how this does settle down to definitely more of a matte finish. Um, and it does wear fairly well. So on the screen, you'll see it fairly freshly applied then three hours later. And this was after being out wearing a mask, exercising. So it wore really well under a mask. All it started doing was sort of wearing off on the inner rim a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Then I've also got it on the screen after having a sort of greasy lunch. So the greases did sort of add a little bit more hydration. It broke it down a little bit, but it still didn't look patchy. I would totally wear this. It was fine. Uh, the next photo is me applying some lip balm over the top. So in the afternoon, I was like, that's it. I'm going to put some lip balm mixed really well with the lip balm, created a beautiful tone. Then I wore that under a mask for another hour or so when I went to the shops and it, it didn't completely remove. So this is a real, this hangs on. Uh, it's a little bit dry, it's not too thick, but it's long wearing, it's a beautiful shade. It wears well through eating, it wears, it mixes well with the lip balm. It's just a nice shade. I just wish 
I could use these because I like I actually like these shades more but it is what it is now I do have two large liquid lipsticks in strange colors um, so I have the shade hazel which is this sort of olive dark olive green so it's definitely not a shade that I'm gonna wear too often but it is super unique and I would love using it as an eyeliner and I think it's kind of striking I wore this on Halloween a couple of years ago and it wore really well um, it does tend to darken, I feel like, as it dries down or as it sort of oxidizes a little bit. So it does get more of a dark, dark green olive effect. So I didn't do a wear test on it this time, but I also know from past experience, it does tend to wear away a little bit on the inner rim, but it stays fairly well. So even though it's not one I'm going to wear every day, I do like the color. I do want to use it as an eyeliner and um, occasionally use it as a lip product. One that I would wear more often, this is really, really strange. The shade Cider, this is, oh, look, it's like a mustard, it's like a mustard tone with a little bit of green in it. It's very swampy, it's very unique, but I like it. So again, I've got a photo of me swatching it. Um, I think it's a really interesting shade. It's kind of flattering. It can be a little bit jarring, but I, I like it. There's something about it. I really like it. I want to keep it and I also did use this as an eyeliner and it works really nicely so it wore all day it didn't flake off and I really like this interesting mustard sort of green shade it's a shade that I love tends to complement my skin tone for some reason and I'm, I'm keeping it when it comes to the black metal liquid lipsticks these okay they're definitely matte setting liquid lipsticks but they're a very different formula so these are opaque and they're that cream sort of flat color whereas these all have a black base with a strong sort of metallic shimmer in them now a lot of these aren't super opaque there are some that are quite opaque um so for example sorrow which is one that's got this like navy gorgeous blue iridescence to it this is quite opaque so you can see it on the hand there and then you get others like the shade eternal which is more of a brown and you can see that it's uh not as opaque the black base is a little bit more um yeah muted so black moon cosmetics is um targeted to more of a gothic aesthetic so these make sense they're all black and base lip products and then you get a metallic color coming through and they all vary so i've got five shades here now that aesthetic is not really for me I think it can look really cool some of these look really awesome but it's not something I'd wear on a daily basis so I'm not going to keep them all but I will keep some as eyeliners like I'm wearing sorrow which is that dark sort of navy blue color I'm wearing that as an eyeliner today these last really nicely on the eye they do apply quite opaquely uh, especially this one and they're just really really pretty I did use this brown shade eternal as an eyeliner as well I didn't find that it was dark enough to define my um lash line enough but it was pretty it is a cool effect the other shades I have there's Armageddon which has this beautiful sort of burgundy sort of red um metallic to it there's Emperor, which is more of an old gold um, sheen. It's quite chunky, like the effect of it. You can see the gold particles quite, um, they're quite coarse compared to the others. Um, and then there's a the shade Mermaider, which I love because it, in my head anyway, it's a reference to Metalocalypse, which I love. Um, but it's also this beautiful sort of teal shimmer that's got almost like when it catches a light, it's got a little bit of purple. It's got different colors to it. Of course, you don't see that all especially when you're wearing it as an eyeliner. But I did wear this as an eyeliner. I did like it. So I'm actually going to keep two of these, um, both blues. So then sort of dark royal blue and uh, the teal color. I'm going to keep those as eyeliners. And if I want to wear a metallic black lip, I will wear those as well. And then the other ones I think I'm going to get rid of. I've got two liquid lipsticks from Colored Rain. So I've got the shade Mars, which is uh, just a nude and also roulette which is like a blackened cherry like a really dark purple shade so when i first tested this out so i went to test out mars and it was i had a pretty dry lips and i thought i'll put a lip balm on um, beforehand and then apply this over the top now that was not a good idea these are fairly thick they're not those runny liquidy liquid lipsticks these are more of a I don't know, they're more, not moussey, they're definitely thicker and they almost have like a decadence to them. There's something about them that they've got a really nice sort of creamy feel. So when you put it on and sort of move your lips together, it just feels really rich and really like luscious. 
but over a, uh, over a lip balm, this was hideous. It was really thick, it was really heavy, and I had to remove it. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. But when I did wear this on its own, it was really, really nice, and it lasted a really long time. So it's this beautiful sort of mid-toned mauve nude, which I really like. I think it's a really, really flattering color. Um, it does settle down very matte. It's almost got a raw ingredient scent with a slight like fruity scent. I don't know, I like it, whatever it is, but I like how this wore. This, I was surprised at how well this wore. So on the screen, you'll see it fairly freshly applied. You can see it is very opaque. It does set down quite matte. There's no like sheen there, but it also doesn't look too drying. This is about four hours later. So you can see again, the color. It hasn't sort of faded at all. It hasn't worn off patchy. It really, really grips really well. This photo is at about six and a half hours. So you can see that it really, really does grip and last really well. And then after eating, this is probably about eight-ish hours in. Um, there's a tiny bit left. It has started to wear off with uh, dinner, but it's a pretty long wearing liquid lipstick and it wasn't too drying. It didn't feel too heavy or gross. It did wear really, really Really nicely so I was really impressed with the formula just don't wear it over a lip gloss it's too thick and sort of gluggy the shade roulette um, is not really my shade it's a very very blackened purple and even though it looks cool especially with this makeup it looks really striking um, I don't think I would reach for this and you can see that there are patches where it's a little bit translucent so it's not super opaque um, and it's just not one I'd reach for so I'm going to get rid of uh, roulette all right, let's talk about Lime Crime. I've got two velveteens here. So we've got the shade Feelings, which is a red, and the shade Shroom, which is this, I don't know, it's sort of similar to this um, mustardy greeny color, but a little bit more muted. Yeah, so it's a little bit more brown. It's a little bit less yellow. Um, so it's got those tones to it, but it's more of a traditional nude. Um, I really love this color. I think this is such a good color. It's um, pretty well known in their range, I think for a reason. Um, it's quite a grungy color. It's very unique. I don't think it wears super well. These are very, very thin though. So unlike the colored rain liquid lipsticks, these are that sort of really thin, almost liquid consistency. And it sets down really, really matte really fast because it is so thin, um, the like, ingredients evaporate and it sets down and it's very very matte these are more drying but because they aren't thick they don't feel like suffocating they feel dry but they're they're not too bad so I don't mind this it wears down fairly naturally so there's not like chunks wearing off unevenly or areas that are really obviously worn down compared to the rest of the lip. Yeah, I like this color, it's unique. I don't think I've got anything like it. The closest thing I do have would be um, cider. Um, and I think these offer something slightly different. When it comes to feelings, this is a really gorgeous blue toned red. Like I can't deny it, it's that really classic, very, very matte, um, very, very sort of powdery, but flat and bright and gorgeous looking red. It's that really classic, pin-up sort of vibe. I love the effect of this. It just didn't wear well enough and fade down well enough for me to keep it. So even though this was super set down and very, very powdery and very sort of budge proof, because it was so set, it actually flaked off a little bit when I was wearing it under a mask. So I was wearing a mask and then after a little while, I took the mask off and I noticed that little lip, uh, little parts of the lip product flaked down onto my face. And then when I went to go like brush them away, because it is so pigmented, it left like smears of red. So even though it doesn't transfer as such, uh, it's not the best to wear under a mask because um, little flakes can get off and sort of get in your foundation. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, pretty much as soon as I ate something, it dissolved and completely like wore away, uh, except for the lip line, which I don't love. So I'm keeping shroom, I'm getting rid of feelings. The brand that I've got most things by is Kaleidos. And this is because they, I am on their PR list. They do send me their collections, which I love. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kaleidos. But I will be decluttering some of your lip products and I'll tell you why. I've got a lot of stuff going on and I've got, I've got feelings about them. So let's start with their lip glosses. I think that's the only lip glosses I've got this month. The rest are just liquid lipsticks. All right, so their lip glosses, I've got four here. I think there were five. I might've decluttered one already. I'm not too sure. 
So we've got one lip gloss here that is sort of a flat color. It's more of a jelly sort of color. So it's translucent, but it's got no shimmer in it at whatsoever. And it's a really beautiful sort of purpley mauve color. Now this is a shade Immersion and I really do like it. I think it's a really pretty color. I'll have a photo on the screen anyway, but um, you can see it's sort of, yeah, it's, it's there's a bit of color there, but it is a translucent color. And then I've got three shimmery shades. So I've got the shade Fantasize, which is sort of like a, a peachy translucent base with, it sort of looks like it's multi-dimensional, but really on the lips, it just shows some pink shimmer. Then I've got the shade Crystallize, which is what looks like a blue, almost iridescent with like multi multi-chrome, duochrome. In some lights, it looks like it's shifting purple. In other lights, it looks like it's shifting yellow. So it's a pretty cool looking lip gloss. And I will have a video on the screen playing, of looking at the tube. So it looks really, really cool. On the lips, this, this looks like a clear gloss with um, a bit of blue iridescent shimmer to it. So, you know, is it unflattering? No, but is it as cool as what the tube is showing? No, it's not. It's just a slightly sparkly clear lip gloss. And then the last shade is Hypnotize. This is more of a berry sort of, again, jelly translucent um, lip gloss that gives a very, very sheer wash of color. And it's got what looks like purple shimmer in it. So iridescent shimmer, not like, you know, opaque chunks of color, they're iridescent and it catches a light um, purple or blue or pink, depending on which lip gloss you're wearing. All right, so in my notes, because I took extensive notes about these, I said I don't love these. They're a sparkly lip gloss, which isn't my first preference of a lip gloss, but I can tolerate it if I really like the gloss and um, the overall effect, you know, is not obnoxious. I said that I feel like these are more of the lip gloss equivalent to a colored highlighter, which makes sense because that's what Kaleidos also make. Um, but these are just almost shimmer and color for the sake of it. I don't really feel like the effect is all that interesting and all that noticeable from a distance. The kicker for me, so if these were just how they looked, but they were a really, really awesome lip gloss, I would keep them. They all look nice on the lips. There's nothing offensive about them. They're not outstanding and amazing, but they're fine. They're wearable, they're fine. But these have a tendency to have a very chemical taste to them. And not that I make a big habit of like licking my lips when I've got lip product on, but sometimes you breathe in and you get this like chemical sort of taste. That chemical taste might actually be the fragrance they put in this. This is like artificial strawberry that's trying to cover something nasty and the nastiness is sort of coming through. Um, but you can also get like the artificial strawberry. I just, yeah, I just don't feel like in my collection of lip glosses, these are things that I want to reach for. Do they look nice? Sure. Do I want to wear them tomorrow? No. So I'm going to get rid of all of these, sadly. Oh, and I was holding up the wrong thing the whole time. This is a frosted tube. This is the Lip Tonic. It's a matte product that I'm going to talk about next. This is the Lucid Lip. That's pretty much the same color as what I swatched, but it's got a shiny finish instead of a matte. So shiny. Matt, you get it. It's a nice mauve tone. Yeah, just for the eagle eyes out there. I was holding up the wrong thing, but I'm getting rid of this. All right, onto the lip tonics, which are the frosted tubes. Um, these, look, I, I like these. I do, I genuinely like these. Um, I think where Kaleidos went wrong is they've recently released things that surpassed them. So I like these. Do, do I like them? Yes. Do I want to reach for these over these? No. So I feel like they have almost, uh, yeah, surpassed themselves with their matte lip products to the point where I, yeah, I don't actually want their lip tonics because they're, they're clay clouds, what do they call lip clays? They're cloud lab lip clays. Yeah, that's the new ones. They're heaps better. In saying that, I'm going to talk about these. I'm going to let you know what I think about them and I might still keep one. So there's that. All right, so there's five shades, three of them are nude and two of them are red. Now there is quite a big difference between the two. The nudes are very, very sheer. So as you can see on my hand, I don't know if you can see it, it's transparent. It's very, very sheer. It's a wash of color. Now this is very different to what I've got in my collection. So I feel like they are a very unique product and I probably should keep one 
just because of that element, but I, oh, I don't know. Look, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So these, I would say, are the equivalent of a matte version of a sheer wash of color on the lips. So instead of going for a glossy lip balm or a tinted balm, if you like that matte blotted effect, but you just want a sheer wash of color, something that doesn't like cover your lips in an opaque way, these are really, really fantastic. Um, and they give a very, very subtle, my lips but better sort of perfected look. The only downside about them is that they wear off really, really fast because they are so thin. Because of the sheerness of them, they are very comfortable, but as soon as you eat or drink, they're pretty much gone, but the, they fade down so naturally because they are just like an amplified version of your lip tone, so it's not super noticeable. The one that's the most noticeable is Immersion, which is that sort of mauve tone. That one is the one that's got most um, sort of pigmentation to them. And one thing that's interesting about these as well, when you do swatch them, they do look quite patchy, but as soon as you apply them on the lips, they apply evenly. They're not patchy, they're not streaky, they apply really, really beautifully. The shade Infusion is more of a sort of pinkier nude, more of your sort of middle of the road nude. And the shade Injection from memory is more of an orange tone, yeah. So, they're very, very sheer. They're very, very comfortable. They give that blotted effect, but they don't last long. And that's my issue with them. Um, as soon as you have anything, you can have a piece of toast, you can have a cup of tea, and this just, it's like, it's off. The good thing is though, that just like a lip gloss, you can reapply these very easily. They don't feel heavy on the lips. Um, so there is something that's great about them. And I really think there should be more products like this on the market. So I was on the fence about these because I really do like the concept of them and I think they work really nicely for what they are. Um, but in my lifestyle, I just can't be bothered reapplying a lip color like three or four times a day. Um, and I probably would have kept a couple of these if it wasn't for these because they have very similar shades. These are just up, like there's something I prefer more. So I'm gonna get rid of these even though I do like them is the end of the story there. Now the red shades are different. They have the same thin consistency, they have the same matte finish, um, but these are a lot more opaque. So I've got the shade Collision, which is a metallic. Now, let's be real, it's pretty, it's a nice metallic red, um, but I don't like metallic lips. Um, the only shade I'd probably wear in a metallic lip is probably red, but even then, I don't really want to wear it. So I'm getting rid of this, even though it is pretty, it's not my jam. I just, I just have never been able to vibe with uh, metallic lip products unless they're used as eyeliners. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this, even though it is very pretty. Now, the one I'm thinking of keeping is the shade Ambition, which is your traditional sort of cool toned red. Um, again, this is a lot more opaque, um, thin layer. It's an opaque red. It's a really beautiful cool toned red. So it's got more pink leanings than orange. And this actually fades down, like it fades down fairly fast. So on the screen, I've got it on. You can see it is a thin formula. Of course, this hasn't completely dried down, but you can see that sort of beautiful sort of cherry color to it. And three hours later, it is like completely removed, but it's left behind a little bit of like a red stain effect, which I really like the look of. If a red is going to fade down completely, I want it to fade down evenly like a stain because I feel like no matter how transparent it is, if it fades down evenly, it always looks good. So, and I could easily have this fade down to a bit of a stain effect, pop a lip balm over the top or a lip gloss, and it just looked like a little bit of a wash of color. So I'm gonna keep this, even though three hours for me isn't enough wear time for a red, but again, the fact that it fades down really nicely, um, I'm gonna keep it. All right, onto these. So these are things that I'm keeping every single one of because I love them and you can pry them out of my cold, dead hands. So these come in sets, and I can tell you they were releasing more. I think they're releasing mini sets soon. So that's exciting because I love them. So these are the Cloud Lab Lip Clays. I'm gonna call them lip clays from now on because that is easier to say. Um, and each kit has four of them. So this is more of a nude kit, and this is more of a dark sort of bright kit, and I love 
I love them all. I think they're all really gorgeous. I'll have a swatch photo, like an arm swatch photo on the screen. I Look, if I was to be really particular, I would say that some of the nude colors do look so similar that I don't need all of them. I probably only need three out of four to get the same sort of effect. But since I've got a tin and it fits four and what's one more? I may as well, I'm keeping the tin anyway. I may as well keep the fourth. So I'm keeping all of these. The formula of these are something like I've never tried before. The closest I've come to something like this are the Powder Kiss Liquid Lipsticks from MAC. So what it is, it feels like a silicon primer type uh, sort of feel. These are fairly opaque. So they are a lot more opaque than... Um, these lip tonics. So they apply like a silicon sort of moussey consistency and they give you an instant effect of matte. But these do the most bizarre things. Um, once you've applied them, they start to set and they don't set like dry, matte, crumbly, crusty, budge proof. They set more of like the color sets to the lips and then you have like a coating of this silicon sort of hydration that keeps things feeling um, hydrated and not dry, but it almost creates a barrier. And because the color has set, the color doesn't transfer. If you keep like kissing your hand, the silicon sort of slip will start removing from the lip product, but the color stays on. So it is a non-transferring product, but it's not dry. It's not like, you know, flaky, it's not uncomfortable. It's this really interesting silicon feel on the lips, but gives you that matte effect, gives you a bold sort of effect. Uh, it looks beautiful, it lasts really nicely. And of course, if you're wearing it with masks, it doesn't transfer and smear, smear everywhere. Or if you've got a toddler who you wanna kiss, um, you can wear even one of the bright colors and it doesn't transfer. So these are really, really fantastic. The kryptonite of these is oil. So as soon as you start to eat, oil will break them down. However, the good thing is, unlike one of those budge proof, really, really, really set liquid lipsticks that you need to sort of scrub off, um, these you just wipe off. Once I've mixed with a bit of oil, you can just get like a tissue, wipe it off and reapply it. So these are really, really interesting. So I compared them to the MAC Powder Kiss um, liquid lipstick that has that same sort of silicon feel. It does set, but it's not, transfer resistant like these are. So it has the same feel, has the same effect, but these, the color doesn't transfer, with, whereas with those, the color does. So these are really unique. They're really comfortable. They look gorgeous. I love them and I love the colors as well. I think they've picked the colors really, really well. Oh, one tip about these though, is because they do start to set maybe like within a minute, they're not the type of product that you should build up because if you're the First layer is starting to set. The second layer will sit a little bit like patchy and it'll start to like look a little bit clumpy um, because it's building on what's already set. So I would say apply these one layer and you're good. Let it set and then move on with your day. All right. So the first color is Adobe. This is more of your sort of nude. This is like my, my lips, but better nude. It's a little bit peachy. It's a little bit pinky. It's a little bit brownie. It's just a really beautiful everyday color. Then the shade June is more of a slightly mauvier tone. So it's a little bit more rosy mauvey. And then it jumps to the shade Terra, which is my all time favorite. This is a really beautiful sort of orangey pumpkin shade. I love it. I think this is such a stunning shade. It wears so nicely. It goes with so many things. Again, pry this out of my cold dead hands. I love this shade so much. And then we've got the shade Sienna. Now Sienna and Abode are so, so, so similar. Um, Sienna just has a little bit more orange to it. So they will be the two that if I was doing a showdown, do I need them both? Probably not because they look so similar on the lips. But again, I'm keeping them because it's a set and I like them and they're all really flattering and I really enjoy using them. And in my collection, even though I like these lip tonics, I think they're really good. Any day of the week, I would reach for these over these, which is why the lip tonics are going sadly. Now in this brighter, darker set, so the one with the sort of dark teal um, packaging, I love all, all of these as well. So the first shade in that set is Cactus Flower. This is a really beautiful, vibrant pink. Um, because it's very, very matte looking, it looks really intense and vibrant and flat. 
I love it. Then there's also agave, which is this beautiful dark teal. Now, it's not a shade I'm going to wear every day, but I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's a really fun alternative to sort of like your traditional bright lip. I love it. The shade Mahogany is probably in the most perfect sort of like chocolate brown shade on me anyway. There's a little bit of a yellowy tone to it, which I really like. Almost like a olivey tone to it, which I love. This is great. I'll have other photos on the screen of me wearing this because even though I wore this just to swatch, I have worn it a bunch of times in the past. So I'll just have those up. Then the last shade, which I did do a wear test on, I did a wear test on some of the nudes and I also did a wear test on the shade Dahlia, which is um, a cool toned, deeper red. This is gorgeous. Again, it sort of looks like Ruby Woo from Matt. MAC. It's got that really matte finish. You can see a video of me showing that this doesn't transfer. So it's a really, really good one if you've got kids around. And then uh, I also have it about three hours later and I was wearing a mask the majority of that time. So um, it is wearing off a little bit patchy under mask wear, but there was no sort of smearing or smudging. It was just that it was wearing off a little bit patchy. Now I do have a wear test of me wearing one of the nudes um, and I did wear it. Um, I did take a photo before and after eating and there was a little bit of wearing off. Um, but again, I think it's more noticeable with the darker shades. So I'm keeping both of those because I love them very much. All right, I've got two more ranges to talk about. Um, the next one is from Suva Beauty. Now I was sent some of these. I did purchase some as well. So there's a bit of a mix going on here. Um, these again, I like these, similar to the Lip Tonics by Kaleidos. I like these. I just feel like the products I've been reaching for recently have surpassed them. So I'll only keep the shades that I'm, I absolutely love. So with the Suva Beauty Moisture Matte Liquid Lipsticks, what I said about them in general, I said I like the formula, but I'm not obsessed with it. I said it's more of a moisturizing matte liquid lipstick formula. It does set down, it does look matte, but there is some flexibility to it. So it does also tend to transfer a little bit. These also take a while to set down. They actually take like a good five minutes, if not longer, to completely set down. Um, and that's why in the swatch photos, you will see that a lot of these look quite shiny. And that's just because I didn't want to wait five minutes in between photos to uh, remove them. Because these are quite moisturizing um, and because they actually do apply quite thinly. So I was talking about some liquid lipsticks that apply quite thick and gluggy and others that apply quite thinly and the thin ones often wear off a lot faster, especially if they've got quite a hydrating formula that has a little bit more movability and flexibility. They just tend to transfer and wear off with eating and drinking a lot faster. But these do feel a lot more comfortable than your traditional liquid lipsticks. They've got a really nice vanilla scent to them. So it's almost like a vanilla extract kind of scent. In my notes, I said, I think the issue I have with some of the shades is that a lot of them have a white, a lot of white pigment to them. So the light shades, the nude shades, the sort of soft pinky shades, um, even this sort of bright orangey red shade, which is called Strange, it's got quite a lot of white pigment to them, which adds opacity. So it looks opaque on the lips, but it also doesn't look like it melds very well with the lips. There's only a couple of shades in this range that tend to not have that white base to them. And they tend to be more of the darker shades. So there's like um, a berry, a red, a purple. Um, but the problem with not having that white base in this formula is that these are a lot sheerer. That being said, I do like some of the shades in this. So I am going to keep maybe one or two. Um, but because I don't love the formula and I feel like a lot of these shades are quite dupable with other formulas that I like more, most of these will go. So the first shade that I have is Awakening. This is a very, very, very light nude. Um, you can see on the screen that it's not too light. Like it doesn't look like it's a concealer lip, but it's almost getting there. In this particular photo where I did a wear test, it's sort of starting to look a little bit concealer lip. In the tube, this looks quite peachy, but I think against my skin tone, it can look a little bit pink as well, which is not my favorite. So I'm not keeping that shade. Then I've got the shade Badnam and this one is beautiful. This is like a My Lips But Better. 
Um, one of those shades that even if it does start to wear off um, because it's so close to my lip tone, um, it doesn't look that noticeable. So this is a contender for a keep. The shade Dreamer, look, it's a it's a pretty color. It's quite pink. It's got a little hint of coral to it. Um, I don't think these are these are not shades that I particularly like. I don't like pinky shades, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. Uh, but it, it is a pretty shade. Abstract Thoughts, this is the kind of pink that I would prefer. It's more of a vibrant pink. And this actually wore really nicely. So you can see it applied in the lips. It gives a really nice sort of bright pink, but not like a neon pink or not like a dark pink. And this one does fade down quite nicely. So this is about three or four hours wear. Um, and even though you can see the lips coming through, it's not looking patchy and it sort of fades down to more of uh, like a softer pink and again if you put a lip balm over this you can make it look like a tinted lip balm and then this is even later after I've eaten so again it's mainly worn off but there is a little hint of pink so I like this um, when I do get pinks I often go really really vibrant so similar to the one in this Kaleidos pack this is like this really sort of vibrant darker pink whereas this super one is just a little bit lighter and it sort of looks a little bit brighter on the lips so this yeah this one is a contender for a keep as well this purple shade is called the unconscious and this one look back in the day I would be loving the purple but I've sort of gone off purples and in this project I've discovered that I've got a lot of purples that I do really like in formulas that I think is slightly better than this because again um, and I have talked about this in past months this sort of purple often can look quite streaky or wear off a bit patchy on the lips because it can be a bit more transparent so I'm, I'm not going to keep that one. The shade Imagination is more of that sort of mauvey rosy nude. Very very pretty. Um, I feel like I've got this in other formulas that I like a bit better um, and it's not a shade that I reach for on a daily basis, so I might pass that one up. The shade Besharam. So this one is this sort of beautiful raspberry red. And again, it's sheer, so it almost looks transparent on the lips. Um, and it sort of can fade down to more of a stain look. When I did swatch this, I was like, I'm putting this aside. I need to make sure that I do a wear test on this and see how well it wears. And then I realized I forgot to do that when I was sort of organizing these photos. So I'm wearing it today. I really like it. I feel like it's going to be similar to this pink where it sort of fades down more like um, a transparent sort of fading and not a patchy one. So um, this is a contender for keeping as well. Then I've got a slightly deeper red. This is the shade Sphinx. And again, it's a really gorgeous red. I should have tested this one as well. Um, this is probably a little bit too purple for me. So I might... Look, it's gorgeous though, isn't it? Fuck. No, I've got to be realistic. Like if it comes down to the two, if I was going to pick one to wear, it would be the more red one. So that one I'm keeping, this one I'm passing up. And the shade that I'm really torn about is the shade Strange. So I love orange toned reds. I really, really, really love the concept of this. And because it does have that white in it, it does look very, very vibrant on the lips. So you can see it here, freshly applied. It's got a lot of shine to it. And then I've got another photo of me doing a wear test where it's settled down a little bit more to a matte. So it's a really, really beautiful color. It's got a bit of a coral sort of element to it. But again, after a couple of hours and a meal, this is pretty much completely worn off my lips. So do I keep this? This is my question. I'm sure I've got heaps of colors like it that wear a lot better. I'm really torn. All right, just to play it safe, I'm keeping these four. Now, what I'm gonna be doing at the end of this project, so after I've gone through all my lip products, I'm gonna go back through the ones I'm keeping and I'm gonna do a swatch off. So on my arm, I'll be swatching like colors. And if I've got like a dupe that's exactly the same as this in a formula that I like better, I'm gonna sort of decide which one I wanna keep or you know, is it worth keeping both? So I'm gonna keep these four until the showdown. Um, I was actually thought I was only gonna keep one, um, but uh, I find it very hard to let things go. All right, the last brand I'm gonna talk about is Kester Black. So Kester Black is um, was an Australian brand created by a New Zealander living in Australia who has since moved back to New Zealand. So I don't know if it's Australian or New Zealand. Whatever, it's an indie brand. They're known for the nail polishes. And then um, I think a couple of years ago, they released lip 
uh, liquid lipsticks and then recently eyeliner. So they're sort of getting into the colored makeup. Um, and one thing I really like about Kester Black is their choice of color is impeccable. I feel like they're always really, really good at picking the right shade of green, the right shade of orange. They're really, really good with their color stories. Like I vibe with their color stories. So um, yeah, I've got six shades here. Again, I was given these in PR, so um, I didn't buy them, but there are some shades here that I really, really love and others that I can, I can do without. These are interesting. I've heard a lot of people say that these are like their favorite, favorite, favorite liquid lipsticks. And I, I get that. I feel like the problem with liquid lipsticks, it's all about body chemistry, how the chemistry of the product works with the chemistry of your lips. Um, and for me, these are probably a little bit dry, more drying than I normally would like. These are more of your traditional liquid lipstick formula. So they're not too runny. They're not too moussey. They're sort of that in between. And they're designed to be that really budge proof matte not moving wear it all day formula so these do apply fairly thin on the lips so even though they they aren't that really runny runny texture like um, lime crime for example these do apply nice and thinly on the lips so they're not too sort of heavy and these probably have one of the best scents um, out of all of them it's almost got like a raspberry I don't know raspberry oil or something it's a bit fruity it's a little bit something it's not too overpowering it doesn't have a real chemical sort of perfume scent to it um, these are also vegan um, so if you're interested they're vegan so in my notes i said the pros of these is they have a nice scent they apply thinly they have some really nice shades um, they don't need to be built up because they have a bold even color with one swipe some shades are opaque others aren't but they do look nice and even and complete in one swipe. And I also said that they set down budge proof so you can wear them under masks and whatnot. The cons I said is that they feel drier than what I would like and they do look quite dry on me. So after a couple of hours of wearing these, these do tend to look a little bit textured, so a little bit puckered. Um, and that's just a sign that it is a more drying liquid lipstick on me. These don't have that dry powdery effect where they flake off your lips, which is good, but they do tend to emphasize lip texture because they do, they are a little bit more dry. And I also said that um, similar to other lip products I've spoken about, because they do apply quite thinly, they are more inclined to wear off faster like after eating. So my conclusion was that for something that feels as dry as these do on me, I would like them to last a little bit longer through eating. That's sort of my payoff. If I'm going to put up with dryness, I want it to at least last a long time where I don't have to worry about touching it up. So I'm not going to keep all of these because they're not my all-time favorite formula, obviously by my description, um, but I do like some of the shades. All right, so the first shade is Never Nude, and I'll have a video playing on the screen of me applying this because essentially for me, this is like a My Lips But Better, like it's just a perfected, um, version of my lips. So it's got a little bit of brown, a little bit of cool tone, a little bit of like mauvey tone to it that I think my natural lips have, which is why I, I either like to go brown tone nudes or sort of mauvey tone nudes. I don't have a lot of peachy pink tones. I've got more of the cooler tone lips. So this is almost like a my lips but better. So I'm going to keep this because a thin layer of this or a thin layer um, with a bit of lip balm, I can definitely make it work and I think the color is spot on. In contrast, the shade Woke Up Like This is definitely more of a pinker tone and I just don't feel like it looks as natural on me. So again, I go for that cooler browner tone because it just works with my complexion. These sort of pinky tones, even though it's a flattering color, even though it's a flattering pinky nude, I'm not going to reach for it over the brown. So why keep them both? Now I did do a wear test on one of the nudes and you can see that um, it's got that texture of the lips. So you can see that as it wears, it gets a little bit drier and you can see those lip lines, which I'm not a huge fan of. All right, then we have the shade Daydream. Now this one's really quite unique. So unlike the last pink one, uh, which is like a pinky sort of, uh, like a dusty pinky nude, this one is like a corally pinky nude. And there's something about this that's really fun and really sort of like uplifting. And this is where I was talking about how um, they're really good at picking shades. I feel like all these shades are really, really flattering. It's just a matter of whether or not I would wear them. I feel like this sort of apricotty, I don't know, sunset sort of color is something that I don't have and I'm tempted to keep it. I just gotta have a think about that one for a second. 
The shade Glow Up is a bit more of a lighter red. So compared to the last one, which is more sort of peachy, this one is more red, but it's, it's not super vibrant. It's a bit of a lighter red. Now I like this shade similar to Strange from Suva. It's got that sort of white base that makes it look like pop on the lips. But I did do a wear test on this and you can see how this doesn't wear down evenly. So when it's first applied, it's gorgeous. It's a flat matte. It's, it's gorgeous. Then two and a bit hours later, you can start to see the lip texture. You can start to see it sort of uh, pull away from the inner rim. Only a short time after that, you can sort of see it starting to like almost like flake off in little chunks rather than fade off. And then ultimately at the end of the day, um, and this is through eating, you can see that it wears off patchy. And that's not what I like from a liquid lipstick. Second last shade is Pow Wow. This is a red. So this is more of your traditional red. It's a lot more sort of darker and vibrant than the last one we saw. Um, and it's more of a blue toned red. It's just your classic red, um, very, very pretty looks gorgeous on the lips but again I've, these are a dime a dozen and i know i've got them in better formulas so i'm gonna get rid of that the last one i am gonna keep this is the shade beauty sleep and this is a really beautiful berry shade so i'm gonna compare it actually to the suva one that i decided not to keep so i've got Kester Black here, the Suva one there. Um, they're very similar colors, but this is just a little bit more opaque. Um, it's a beautiful sort of wine berry shade. And you can see that on the lips when I've swatched this and it hasn't completely set down, um, there is a little bit of translucency to it, but it's a nice even color. And I think it's a really, really flattering berry. Um, I did wear this. I wore this filming Beauty News. I was drinking while filming um, and so after about three hours of chatting um, you can see it's starting to pull away at the inner part of the lip. All right as it stands I'm getting rid of 26 and keeping 23. Now when I was going into this video I'm sure I culled a lot more so I might have a quick refresh. Bugger it I'm getting rid of one of the Kester Black Beauty Sleep even though it's a nice berry. Um, it does wear away in the inner part. And I think if I wore that way longer, it would start to wear off patchy. So I'm only keeping the nude and that sort of like apricot-y sort of vintage color, which I think is quite unique. Bugger it, that'll do. Um, I'm getting rid of 27 lip products and I'm keeping 22. Now, if it wasn't for these sets, I would be keeping a lot less, but I can't get rid of these sets, so. 22 will have to be. I really thought I was gonna get rid of some of those weird mustard colors, but as I was wearing them, I'm like, this is weird. And this, some people are gonna think this looks gross, but I kind of really love it. So I'm keeping them. They're so unique, I gotta keep them. The mustards, the green stain. All right, so that is it for Indie Liquid Lipstick and Lip Gloss Month. I don't know if I'm gonna roll straight into Indie Month number two with the bullet lipsticks. I really want to, but my issue is with masks, bullet lipsticks are more inclined to transfer. So what do I do? I don't know. I'll make that decision tomorrow because the new month starts tomorrow. I'm actually on time with this video. Uh, no, probably not with editing. That's a different story. Oh, I was just punching in the numbers and I thought, because I'm keeping telly. I'm not telling you the telly because it's a surprise. But with all this, I've tested over 300 products already this year. So... I'm doing very well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to test my whole collection in the next four months, but 306 to be precise, which is awesome work. Go me, go team. So hopefully you enjoy that. I do get a lot of comments of people saying that this is their favorite series of mine, which is fantastic because it's so goddamn time consuming. It's literally taking up a whole year of my life, but I'm glad people are enjoying it because it is encouraging me to try those new lip products. Um, and I have been enjoying it so far. So thank you for those comments and leave a comment down below. What was your favorite lip product that I wore? Did I declutter it? Shock horror. Uh, did I keep it? What did you think of the mustard colors? Bit unusual, bit different. Um, anyway, I'm going, I'm getting delirious. It's late at night. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.